elevate them in your right hand. Yes. Amen. And please read. This is my Bible. It is the truth. It is the powerful. It is the living word of God. I will read it. I will believe it. I will live it. To the glory of God. To the blood of Jesus. And the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Find a neighbor and say, neighbor. It's good to be here today. Catch another neighbor and say, neighbor. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless. All right. All right. Amen. The music industry. Amen. 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 Y'all have been praising the Lord today. Yes, they have. Amen. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. Amen. We're here to lift him up. Amen. Amen. My the brother here from Eagle Town, I thought he was going to come get Brother James Moore to talk. <laughs> <laughs> He could have had it. Y'all talking about y'all, we come down, y'all, we, we come down there. Amen. That'll work. Amen. Amen. Brother Mo, we got to be good friends. Yeah. Oklahoma. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you guests and visitors for being here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Mr. Brandon, good to see you, Junior. Amen. And Senior. Amen. 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 God bless all of you and all my brothers and sisters. Gay, you doing good. You got folks following you to church. Amen, amen. 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 Ambassador to have guests here today as well. God amen. bless all of you. God is a good God. All the time. Amen. In spite of what we see and CNN and HNN and all that and all these networks, God is still in control. Yes, told us we were fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. So every chance we get, we ought to praise the Lord. Yeah. My Bible says we were created in His image. His likeness. We ain't supposed to be acting like everybody else. Peter said we're a raw priesthood. A peculiar people. Didn't he say that? A holy generation. Who brought you all of us. See, that's for us. Out of, out of darkness, into the marvelous light. Now yeah. y'all in the light? Yeah. Shine like you in the light. Yeah. Right. Praise be to God. Amen. 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 Journey with me if you would. Blame it on the Holy Spirit, not me, because what he got for me to give to you all today is in Psalm 19. Very familiar. Pray to your past. Psalm 19. Verse 14, Psalm 19, verse 14, mm -hmm. and it reads, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Yes. Amen. I'm going to preach you from this subject. Praying for good conduct. Turn and neighbor to neighbor. Preacher go to preacher about Praying for good conduct. Y'all, we hear preachers say that all the time. This psalm of David. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Be acceptable Amen. in your sight. Amen. O Lord, o Lord. My, strength my strength and my redeemer. Work it on out. We pray for many things. But seldom do we pray for a good conduct. Right, right. However, Reverend Head, what well, the psalmist is praying for good conduct in our verse. Amen. It is a model prayer for all of us. Our verse speaks of the subjects of conduct, mm -hmm. the standard of conduct, and the sanctifier of conduct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can write it down. The subjects of conduct, <coughs> the standard of conduct, <coughs> and the sanctifier of conduct. Yeah. Right. First of all, in dealing with the subject of conduct, mm -hmm. the words of my mouth yeah. and the meditation of my heart. Yeah. The psalmist is concerned 
about two important matters of conduct. Yeah. His mouth yeah. and his meditation. Yeah. Yeah. Let's deal with the mouth first. Right. How important to have a sanctified mouth. Y'all yeah. can take a deep breath. We just warm up. Too often the tongue is a cesspool of iniquity. Yeah. 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 Spewing or throwing or offering out filth from morning till night or from sun up to sundown. Many tongues, you all, are full of lies and profanity which hurt people and dishonor God. Do I have a witness? But a good tongue is a benefit to everyone. Wise men will pray that their tongue will be a holy tongue. Yeah. Yeah. The believer, y'all, who does not bridle his or her tongue yeah. is not truly religious. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Reverend, I need some help with that. I know you do. James said in 126, in James chapter 1, in verse 26, he said, If anyone among you thinking he is so religious... And does not bridle his tongue, but is only tricking or deceiving himself, his religion is useless. Right there in the Bible. That's a seemingly religious hope. We must speak and act as though we were already facing Christ in judgment. James said that in James 2 and 12. Brothers and sisters, the power of speech is one of the greatest powers God has given us. With the tongue. With the tongue, man can praise God. With the tongue, man can pray. With the tongue, man can preach the word of God. With the tongue, a person can lead the lost to Christ. Oh, what a privilege. But watch this. Watch this. But with the same tongue, turn to your neighbor and say, the same tongue. A person can tell lies. Ruin a man's reputation? Y'all don't hear me. Or uh, break a person's heart, person's heart with the same tongue. The ability to speak. Words is the ability to influence others and to accomplish, watch this, tremendous tasks, and yet we take that ability for granted. All the time. Because some of us, well maybe not some of you, some of somebody else. Feel like we always got to give a person a piece of our mind. Yeah. Y'all don't hear me? Yeah. We always got to say what we have to say. Yeah. Well, I just had to say. No, you ain't got to say it. Oh, no, no. <laughs> you just wanted to say it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Never underestimate the guidance you give. By the words you speak or do not speak. Don't ever underestimate how you talk to folk or what you say. Because listen, Jesus spoke to a woman at the well. And her life and the lives of her neighbors experienced what? A miraculous change. John chapter 4. Peter preached at Pentecost. And what happened? 3,000 souls came to salvation through faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 2. Yeah. So the tongue is very, very important. Mm -hmm. The tongue, you all, has the power to direct others to the right choices. It, it would do all of us good to read frequently the book of Proverbs. Yes. And note especially, you all, yeah. the many references to speak. Y'all need some help? I'm going to give you some help. All right. All right. Proverbs 15 and 1 tells us, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. All right, all right. Lying lips, you all, are abomination to the Lord. Y'all don't hear me? Proverbs 12 and 22. Yes, the tongue, you all, is like a bit and a rudder. It has the power to direct. Yeah. It's got some power. Yeah. That little thing in your mouth is strong. Yeah. It has killed a lot of folk. Yeah. 
Yeah. Messed up a lot of folks. Yeah. Yeah. How important it is that our tongues direct people the right way. Mm -hmm. David knew the works and the words of God. Amen. Oh, David knew. Amen. Yes, sir. He realized, Reverend Hegwood, that it was important that we meditate on God's word yeah. and God's work. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, if we delight in God, we will naturally meditate on, us, yeah. on him and, yeah. and give expression of his truth yeah. with our lips. And this will help to keep us from sin. Our speech, you all, has the power that few other capabilities possess. For our tongue can be set on fire by hell itself. Mm. Mm. Let me walk a little further. Yeah. The tongue can bring out flames of hate. Yeah. The tongue can bring out flames of prejudice. Y'all yeah. still with me? Yeah. The tongue can bring out flames of scat, flames of yeah. scat slander. The tongue can bring out flames of jealousy. Yeah. The tongue can bring out, bring out flames of envy. Yeah. And they seem to all come from the lake of fire. Yeah. From Satan himself. Yeah. And it will be punished, as John talked about in Revelation chapter 20. But as we realize, as we analyze and look at this, this psalm, David here sees many things. When you give me spare time, go home, go home and read it. Psalm 19. Verses 1 through 6, Reverend Baston, yeah. he sees the glory of God's work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Verse 1 through 6. Well, yeah, in verses 7 through 10, you all, he sees his holiness and grace. Yeah. But in verses 11 through 14, on, now. he now prays to benefit from all of them. Let the words of my mouth. And then he goes into meditation, secondly. Secondly, he says, as a, as a matter of conduct, he says... His meditation, our thoughts are the, are the key to our deeds. Therefore, we need a good thought life. I'm, I'm going to really come down your road now. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you need a good thought life. Yeah, that, that pattern you had, you know, you need a good thought life. Let me help you. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23 says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. We, we, listen, we may not be what we think we are, but we are what we think. That's what I was telling you all. We may not be what we think we are, but we are what we think. So how y'all thinking out there? You are what you think. See, I might not <laughs> you know, be a prophet. Amen. I might not be royalty, but you know what? If I think I'm royalty, y'all with me? Amen. You, you are what you think, you know. Now, I pray for a sanctified thought if you want a holy life. Let me help you. Evil thoughts will produce evil conduct. It'll produce it all the time. I like what Paul said in Philippians 4 and 8. He said, fix your thoughts on things that are what? True, honorable, right, pure, lovely, and of good report. Isaiah said it like this, Sister Kylie. Isaiah said it in 26 and 3. Thou will keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. We've got to quit out our mind and our thoughts just go everywhere. Then you go wonder. Yeah. To this and that. You know what? I say every time, President, because I, I, I know God's in control. Yeah. But I know one thing God is unhappy with America. Yes, he is. Amen. Yes, he is. Wrong thinking, you all, leads to wrong feeling. Uh -huh. yeah. And before long, mm -hmm. the heart and the mind are pulled apart mm -hmm. and we're strangled by worry. Y'all mm -hmm. can say amen. Yeah. And but the writer of Hebrews said, lay aside every weight and the sin. Yeah. That's so what? It easily and it, it snares us. And we've got to run with patience the race that God has prepared for us. See, all of us got a race to run. Yeah. Let, let me, can I really come in your road? But all of us trying to run somebody else's race. Oh, oh, you, you, see, you can't run shoemate's race. That's shoemate's race. You can't run, run Mobley's race. That's Mobley's race. You can't run Red Bass's race. That's Bass's race. Amen. You can't run Sister Miley. That's her. You got your own. And the thing is, you look at you all up in somebody else's rank. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Amen. All right. 
And everything is catching up, catching up, catching up. Because you need to stay in your lane. You come to the Bible, so that's what we're talking about. Run your own race, the race that has been prepared for you. But we worry and we get tangled up. And the thing is, everything you do is not a sin. But a lot of us got some weights on us. Yeah. Weights. Yeah. Weights. Yeah. Some of them TV programs y'all can't, y'all go crazy, y'all miss. <laughs> weights. Yeah. Amen. You, you miss this meeting because of weights. Yeah. Amen. You, you got this to, you got to go to perform in this place. Weights. Yeah. Things are holding us down, you all, and, and keeping us from Bible study and, right. and Sunday right. school right. and tithing and, and, and weights, you all. Lay aside, it says, every. But brothers and sisters, wrong thinking leads to wrong feelings. Right. And if you look around before long, you all, you're poor and you're separated from what you're supposed to be doing. When the Bible says he will guide you to all truth, that's the way of saying that the Holy Spirit, you all, will be the steering wheel of your life. There are two ways. Two ways, you all. I'm not gonna hold you long. Two ways to get to a destination. And I know many of us have GPS and all that, but you still gotta put it in in the trusted GPS and all that. Sometimes, uh, you know, they don't they don't lead you right. Uh, you got right. quests and all that stuff. Sometimes they they wrong. They sure take you all around the wrong way. One way to look at is to look at a map, brother Bell. When you go to Oklahoma, Eagle Town, and all that, but you probably know the way. The car probably knows the way. <laughs> One way is to look at a map and figure, figure it out yourself as you drive. But another way, you all, is to have someone drive you that already knows the way. That's why you got to pray for the Holy Spirit's guidance. Because he always knows what it takes. When you depend on Jesus, you got to sing that song. He always knows the way. Yes, sir. Notice David's awareness that he said that's a standard of conduct. The text says, acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord. Because he knew the Lord always knew the way. He said, O oh Lord. The psalmist prays that his conduct will meet with God's standard. Yes, 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 See, some men only want the approval of men of the word. Yeah. But the true standard of right and wrong is God's standard. Yeah. Do y'all hear me? Yeah. We too must choose to live by God's standard if we want to live a life of high character. Yeah. Daily laying down our own desires and following him. Yeah putting our own resources on disposal. Because here it is, you messed up enough stuff anyway in your life. Help me hold the door. So don't you think it's about time you depend and trust the Lord? Well, let me really come down here. Some of y'all are mad the wrong foe instead of waiting on the Lord. Some of y'all are dead the wrong foe. Some of y'all that took the wrong job instead of waiting on the Lord, well, they paying $22,000, but that job ain't for you. It might be a place where they paying sixteen fifty. You done bought the wrong car because it's beautiful. And the Lord didn't lead you to it. The Lord, if you listen to the Lord, the Lord would have told you, look underneath the engine. It ain't got no transmission. But you buying beauty because it's a beautiful ride. Not waiting on I'm going to preach it like I feel it. The law. You bought things out of the stores because you saw somebody else look good in it. Hello, ladies. But did the Lord tell you to get Hold on. And then you get home and you look in the mirror. And you say, hold oh, on. I need you to take this back. I got it on sale, but it really don't fit me like I thought it fit. Sister Jennifer down at the church. Oh Lord, I gotta take this back. Well, let me move on from there. Cause brothers, you have done to some of the same things. I can tell on real. I can talk about Reverend Myler. Yeah. Some of them nice slim cut suits yeah. that look good hanging up there. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. And Blair Underwoods. Yeah. Red Miley can't wear Blair and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Amen. Good. Michael Kors, I can't wear him either. And show sure up can't wear Tommy Hill figures. I got to get into Stacey Adams or the Steve Harvey. Because they full figure. Everything ain't for you. You got to trust on the Lord to lead you and guide you. No, 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 no. The reputation is what others, reputation is what others think about you, uh -huh. but your character is who you really are. Yeah. 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 That's Rich said. Folks don't think that. Yeah, yeah. They don't think this. Right, right. But you know why you might have went at the party shop. That's it. You might went in there to buy some chips or some ice. Mm -hmm. If folks don't think you went in there and bought some Jack Black yeah. or some Hennessy, that's on them. Uh -huh. You know who you are. Y'all can say amen. amen. You ain't got nothing to prove to nobody but God. Amen. 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 David went a little further. I'm almost done. All right, he right. talked about a sanctified, he's the sanctifier of conduct. He said, right here, oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at that again. He said, oh Lord, big lad, oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The one, Brother Shoemaker, who could sanctify us is the Lord. Yeah. Right. Amen. I got to walk heaven right there. He's our redeemer. Yeah. Right. Love my wife, love my daddy, mamas, amen, amen, kids, but they didn't, they, they didn't die for them. Love them dearly. They're they, they not my redeemer. And he, he's the one that saves us. Yeah. He gives us strength. You ought to live a holy life. Yeah. Amen. To, to not let our outward circumstances determine our attitude. Yeah. Oh, Lord. My strength and my redeemer. As I close this little message down, let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Living your Christian life, you all, is fulfilling the contract of an agreement to build a building. To build a new life. When all of us accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we we took a contract yeah. when we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Yeah. Sister Tony, we took on a contract, right, right. agreement to build a better life. Yeah. Let's say you all that you paid to get a brand new custom built home, all right. a top dollar house yeah. built on your lot. Uh -huh. And the builder comes and finishes the house with a combination of blue bricks, black bricks, white bricks, chipped up bricks, warped wood, used faucets, outdated paint, all mixed up together to finish and build your house. You wouldn't appreciate that, Brother Brantley, because I'm sure that's not what you pay top dollar for. Y'all still with me? And you would probably Take that joker, that contractor to court, and file, y'all with me, a lawsuit for putting in that old mess, that messed up mess, with chip bricks and old faucets and walk wood, and, 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 and because you have paid a top dollar price. That's your hard earned money. Money you didn't save. Loan you to God. You don't pay you a top dollar, you don't pay for a top dollar house mm -hmm. and expect the contractor to use junk material. Y'all right. still with me? Yeah. You want what? Top dollar yeah. material. Uh -huh. I'm done here, may the Lord bless you real good. If you are building a top dollar house, yes, Lord help me. If you're building, trying to build a great life, yeah. you got to look to Jesus. Yes, you got to look upon the cross. Jesus paid top dollar. Jesus paid top dollar for your raggedy self. While you out there rocking and sock, moving and grooving, laying and playing, cutting and shredding. On the cross, Jesus paid top dollar. For you out there when you were throwing stuff down your plate. 
God gave his, how did he do it, brother? He gave his only begotten son that he saw a believer in him shall not perish so you can have a right relationship with Jesus. Gee, God didn't give you nobody else, but he gave you the best. He didn't throw something else out of heaven. He didn't have no tile or a little bit of blessing. He gave you his best. The Bible tells us that God says, I paid some good money for you. So you can build a good life. Don't use cheap material when he's paid a top dollar price for you. Let me close this down. The least you can do. The least you can do is have a conduct overhaul. Watch your mouth. Love more. Suffer more. Sacrifice more. Thank God for his glory. Thank God for his holiness. Thank God for his grace. Make the word, I'm going to hear it. Make the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Be acceptable. Not your sight, but in his sight. I'm trying to please God. You may not like the way I am. You may not like the way I talk. But I'm trying to please God. I'm trying to please God. Let me help, let me help you with this. Some folks just like to say anything. But I like this. If you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all. Keep your mouth closed. I'm so glad that God sends you a testimony. Because my brother here from me this time, he said he trusted God because he was putting his hand in Hog's mouth. Yeah, it's all about the mouth because he trusted his hand in the Hog's mouth. You've got to trust that God will 